Are you ready? One, two, three. Hi, everybody. I'm Kristen Davis, and I'm here with the unbelievably wonderful Cynthia Nixon, my friend and brilliant actress and activist. And we are here for a very specific reason, and it is to talk about films we love that inspire us and bring us hope. And the reason that we're doing that is because here we are stuck in this, you know, somewhat insane world of the pandemic. I'm really happy I'm here in my home with my family. I'm so lucky that that's true during this time. And there are many people that that's not true. And the UN Refugee Agency, who I am very honored to get to work with, we've been trying to come together in solidarity to those people who are displaced and, you know, really thinking about what would it be like not even having soap, you know, not having the basics and how hard that must be. So with that said, uh, Cynthia, my love, let's talk about your films of hope. Oh, tell me your first one. Um, Billy Elliot. Ah, oh, I love it. You know, such a great character study of a young kid in a working class mining town. And he loves to dance. Lads do football, not Bali. Don't see what's wrong with it. And in that time and in that place, this is really shocking. Right. But he will not let his dream die. And it is this incredible moment of hope. Always be yourself. When he finds that, that self-expression, it unites everyone, even the people who were kind of, uh, you know, naysayers in the beginning. Yeah. I love that. So what's your, you know, what's your movie of Well, hope? my first one that I want to say that I rewatched last night is Virunga which is a documentary. There's civil war in the Democratic Republic of Congo and a group of people come together to protect this park and the gorillas. And it's right in the middle of an oil company wanting to come in and ravage the park to get oil out of this lake, but also a rebel group who wants to take over the area. But they basically wage war on these park rangers. Si on échoue ici, c'est tout le secteur de la conservation au Congo qui va sombrer. Ça, c'est une catastrophe. And yet they're so incredibly brave. They feel a responsibility to the land and to the people of the Congo that this is their birthright to, to be able to enjoy this beauty. It goes to show that just these few people standing their ground, even while they're being shot at and bombed, I mean, it's insane what they go through. It's very, I mean, I'm trying not to cry now. It's like, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot, but you know, it somehow, you know, helps you feel better. Like, well, look at, if they can stand up to this, you know, we can be strong, you know, during, during this pandemic. J'ai accepté donner le meilleur de moi-même pour que la vie sauvage soit sauvegardée. Because it goes to show you that, you know, it doesn't take a lot of people to create change, which reminds me of one of your other films, which I love very right. much. My second uh, inspirational film is called Knock Down the House, and it's about four working class women who run for Congress. And all four of these women are extraordinary, like the families they come from, the worlds they come from. It's really interesting if you're interested in politics and if you're interested but even in- even if you're not, even if even you're if not, not, obviously this is when you ran as well. And, you know, it is a movement and they're so charged up. You feel like, yes. You know, we, we need to be reminded of the different situations that people are dealing with every day. And people who are running for office because of their own personal life experience that then they want to take into government to make change. To make change, yes. Let's raise some hell and take our lives back. I'm going to talk about Selma. Selma is a movie that I did not watch right away because I thought to myself, well, I know what happened in Selma. And then I watched the film and I was like, no, I didn't know hardly any of this. I didn't know about the personal details. And I think Ava DuVernay is just a brilliant, brilliant filmmaker in terms of bringing home the details and like what each person in that huge group, you know, the price they paid and how many people it took and how long it took. Yeah. John Lewis was in the front. Did you know this thing about him that um, he very deliberately wore a trench coat because he knew he would be beaten and he wanted the blood to show on the cameras? Wow. Those that have gone before us say no more. 
Okay, your next one. It's um, called Aquila and the Bee. Mm. It's about a little girl who turns out to have a knack for spelling and Lawrence Fishburne takes it upon himself to train her. It's really interesting, the world of the spelling bee and all these different kids. And I, I thought of it so many times because with my, my son doing all this homeschooling in the last you know few months yes. and trying to learn his multiplication tables, the way in which the mind works and also just sort of kids interacting with knowledge and, you know, and Lawrence Fishburne unpeels the final stumbling block she has, which is that she's afraid to be as ambitious mm. as she really is. And that's so powerful for girls. Yes, definitely. But for everybody, if they can not cut their expectations of themselves or what they can do, but actually own them and go so much farther than they ever thought they would. Say it. I want to win. You want to win what? I want to win a National Spelling Bee! Good. Wait, I feel like I had another film and now I can't remember um, what you it was. Had, you were going to maybe talk <gasps> after about... After Spring! The... After Spring! Yeah. After yes. Spring! So After Spring is also a documentary. And it's about Syrian refugees in a camp. It's fascinating because you actually really understand and see what it's like to be suddenly displaced and in this huge refugee camp. A whole um, like town has sprung up because all the people who came just bring their skills and open like one guy's like, I can make pizza. Why shouldn't I make pizza here? It's inspiring from that perspective, the ingenuity that, that all these people have. But it is also one of those things where you're like, wow, you know, but for the grace of God go I. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those, those movies where you think there are people all around the world who cannot even be in their home right now mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. that year. And, and it does bring us back then again to, you know, this current pandemic and the fact that, you know, those people really don't have resources at all to support them. So like even the people who are working in the hospitals don't have personal protection equipment. So there is this group that we have created to try to get supplies and you know needed resources to the people who literally have nothing. The UN's COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund for the World Health Organization. Please, if you can help, make a donation at covid19responsefund.org. We encourage you to please donate and, and please also check out these films. We think these are really great films that will inspire you at this hard time. And please share with us your personal films of hope using the hashtag films of hope. Thank you for all of your, your very thorough, deep thinking on these movies and for bringing the light as well, Cynthia. You brought the light today. Thank you, baby. You, I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Bye.